you've got a test coming up, you know you need one, but how do you make the best one so that you do not waste any of your time? You need top marks, so you need a study guide, but how do you make the best study guide? Find out right now. I'm Terrell, and this is Absolutely Studying. I bootstrapped my way through university while juggling a full-time job and a family, and now I want to pay it forward. I want to supply you with all of the resources and support you need to flourish in your academic career. Today, we're talking about study guides and most specifically, how to make the best study guide. If you make study guides that have not been particularly useful for you in the past, leave it in the comments below and let's compare. While you're down there, check out the link in the description for my free study planner. It's in the description and it will help you a ton with creating your study guide. There are 10 key features that help you to make the best study guide. These are backed by science, so I didn't come up with them myself. It's from a study, and I will link that study in the description below if you have any further questions about any of the aggregated data that this that supports these 10 points. So these are the 10 eyes that to make the best study guide. The first one is important. You want to summarize important features. The study guides you want to create have to have all of the important points that you need for your upcoming test. If you don't have the important points, then you're not going to cover them and you're not going to have that knowledge for your test, obviously. And on the flip side, if you fill it with too much fluff, you're going to lose the important concepts in all of that fluff. And you are going to spend too much time focusing on information that you don't necessarily need rather than the really critical, important bits that you should really stock up on. Second point is interesting. You want your study guide to be interesting and engaging so that you will be motivated to study it. Make sure that it plays to something that you want to do. If you enjoy like listening to podcasts or listening to things, then, then try recording you reading back your notes. If you like more diagrams or pictures, then add those pictures, charts, timelines into your study guide. If you have to actually be doing something to learn the information, then try using flashcards or something that engages you, practice tests even. Make sure it's something that you are interested in doing so that you're not just staring at an open book like you do for so many of your study sessions. The third is that it is immediately available. So that means don't make Make a study guide and just leave it on your laptop if you can't access it from your tablet or your phone. If you're out and you have time to study, then if it's sitting at home on your laptop, it's not really going to help you. Even if you print it out, maybe save a copy to an online drive or the cloud and that way you can access it from anywhere. It has to be available for you to study off the study guide. So leaving it somewhere is not going to be very helpful. The fourth is that it has to be inspiring or motivating. If you can find something inspiring or motivating about it, maybe it is a concept that you are really interested in, or perhaps it is you dig a little bit deeper and even if it's not a concept that you're particularly interested in, maybe you're really interested in the story of one of the developers. I remember I was really, really intimidated by chemistry. It was something that I didn't necessarily find easy and so I was always worried about my performance. Then I started digging a little bit deeper and I learned the story of Mendeleev and when I learned that story, I was really inspired about his passion for the periodic table and it made it more relatable to me. I was inspired by Mendeleev's story and his love for the periodic table and so that helped me to be inspired to learn chemistry better and easier and really pour my heart into it and now it is a subject that I thoroughly enjoy. In order to be inspired by a subject or a concept, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the surface level. Dig deep and find something that you have in common or something that you love about it and then you can find inspiration in that. Next is informative, which is another guinea. If 
your study guide is not informative, then it's not doing its job. It has to give you the information for you to be able to take it back. You have to be able to work with the information. On flashcards, you have the question on the front or the diagram on the front and the answer on the back. For diagrams, you have the picture of what it is you're trying to learn and then it's labeled or flow charts or concept charts or comparison charts. You're using the information, you're taking it in. Even when you're doing practice exams, there's questions, but then you go back and you correct those practice exams to see where you went wrong and why. And then you go and find out what the correct answer for those practice exams are. In all of these different ways, you are taking in the information, which is what makes that study guide informative. Next, you want your study guide to be illustrative. So that means making it visual, add visual elements. Even if you are a horrible artist, you can still make simple diagrams that give you the layout of the land per se. In anatomy, a lot of people, instead of drawing a beautifully detailed heart with muscle definition and beautiful lines and, and beautiful illustrations, they will just draw the simple triangular shaped box and then block that off to create the four chambers. It still does the job. Just because I use fancy words like diagram does not mean you have to pull out full watercolors or a pastel kit. You can do simple diagrams just so that you can visually see what it is that you're talking about. Illustrations are really going to enhance because they give you a map of the information that you're reviewing. And that's never a bad thing. Number seven is integration. Integrate the knowledge and the information and the illustrations. Integrate all of these different moving parts together and work with that. Having these different parts, finding out how they all connect, whether it's a comparison chart or a brainstorm or a concept chart or the diagrams, having all of these different elements together and seeing how they work together, how they integrate, how that information can be demonstrated and shown in all of these different ways is only going to enhance your understanding. Number eight is interactive. This can be something as simple as flashcards. Flashcards can enter all of these things. They can have charts, they can have diagrams. You can integrate all of that information with flashcard charts and now they're also interactive. You're quizzing yourself, you can quiz a friend. You are using the information together. You can also do something like a flow chart where that is a visual representation of the information. And it's also interactive because you're going through a sequence of events. There are a ton of different ways that you can achieve these. And each time you add another one of these eyes, it's just going to add another layer of understanding to what it is that you really need to get a solid handle on before your exam. Finally, iterative. What that means is you want the information to be repeating. When you're studying, you study because you can't just take the information in once and then forget about it till test time and expect that you're going to be able to A, remember it, B, understand it, and C, work with it. Iterative is that you're repeating the process over and over and over. You're studying over and over and over. In something like a study guide, for example, you take in the information at lecture, you take in the information when you read your textbook, you cross-reference and put out the information when you create the study guide, and now you want to review that study guide again and again and again. Each time you work with this information is an iteration. You're working with it again, you're using it again, and that is going to help you during exam time to remember, recall it, and work with it. Finally, impacting. It is always great if this can be impactful on your learning experience. Maybe it has made your experience much easier. Maybe it has helped you to have this aha moment and you finally had a breakthrough in a subject that you always found difficult. If it can impact your learning and your study session, that is going to make all of the difference in the world. If you are looking to make a study guide, pick up my free study planner in the description below 
below. It has more than 20 different study activities that you can easily convert into study guides. And they're really going to help you to really further your understanding of the concepts at hand and help you during test time. It also has a confidence tracker and a study session planner to help you to plan out your study sessions and really make sure that you get everything you need to covered. If you have an upcoming test, check out this video in the card above and below. It helps you to make a comprehensive study plan for your upcoming test so that you can ace it with ease. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Thursday and they were always about study tips, organizational hacks, and homework help to help you through the study struggle. I also have a ton of useful articles and resources on my website at www.absolutelystudying.com. I really enjoy helping. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always down there engaging or you can take them to my socials. Links are in the description. Until next time, I hope you have an amazing adventure.